Aloha Mai Kako, a Kamalai Curtain Call, a weekly program of reviews, previews, interviews, and features of and or with the great art and artists on Maui and beyond. I'm Paul James Brown. Seabury Hall Performing Arts and King Kakalika Drama opened their fall shows on the same day. I saw Seabury's Me Girls, the high school version musical, on opening night and King K's Shakespeare's The Tempest the following evening. Mean Girls was written by Tina Fey for the 2004 mega-hit film, and then she adapted it for the Broadway stage in 2018 with music by Jeff Richmond and lyrics by Nell Benjamin. David Ward directed and choreographed the show. There are 13 principals and 36-member ensemble. There were so many outstanding auditioners, Mr. Ward double and triple cast the show. Mean Girls is the story of Katie Heron, Raya Carlson, who grew up in Kenya. She is now 16. Her parents, played by Aviva Mizell and Turner Alston, feel it is best to return to a suburb of Chicago so she can become socialized. She arrives at North Shore High School and is not embraced. Two students, Damien Adrian Ardoin and Janice Sarkeesian, Ruby Mackey, enlist her to infiltrate the plastics as they refer to the clique of social royalty headed by Regina George, Bobby Golden, with her servant Gretchen Wieners, Ariana Matanan, and her aptly named sidekick, Karen Smith, Catherine Hampy, and tell them everything they say. In order to become accepted, Katie abandons her true self to become a plastic. She uses deceit, drama, trickery, backstabbing, mendacity, betrayal to dethrone Regina, and then becomes her. She learns her old self was better than the new one. Ultimately, the lesson of the show is know yourself, love yourself, and don't try to be someone else. This show is spectacular. David Ward has been blessed with perfect actors and singers for every role. Ms. Carlson's Katie is an exceptionally likable character who morphs into an intensely unlikable one and back again. Her singing is Broadway quality, as is her acting. Ms. Golden's Regina is spectacular when she makes her grand entrance in Meet the Plastics, and her fall from grace as she puts on the pounds was heartbreaking. I found myself rooting for her. Ms. Matinan's Gretchen is so desperate to be liked, which she fully demonstrates in the marvelous song, What's Wrong With Me? Karen is such a perfect name for Ms. Hampy's character. She is so Karen every moment. Ms. Hampy is another outstanding singer in this company filled with them. Her number, Sexy, is a showstopper. Ms. Mackey and Mr. Ardoin make a terrific duo, and here again we have outstanding voices. Jack Benden's Aaron Samuels is a smart, sensitive character whose duet with Ms. Carlson on October 3rd was another smash. Julia Golding was the vocal director and singing was as good as it gets. All of the soloists were so good. They should ask to do a recording of this show. I especially thought the Fugue Quartet and Rockin' Around the Pole was one of the best in the show. Big accolades to Andre Morissette and Vanessa Cerrito for the costume design and to seamstresses Diana Spate and Jennifer Oberg. The look of this show is another aspect that is Broadway quality. The fit of the costumes was like couture, and the costumes Ms. Golden wore as she gained weight were flawlessly convincing. There were nine numbers that involved the ensemble, and they not only sang, but they danced gloriously. Kudos to Mr. Ward for the choreography and Megan Reyes, who did choreography for the wonderful tap number in Stop. Todd Van Amberg designed the set pieces, and they were made to set the stage and move on and off without hesitation. The projections are the ones used for the Broadway show by Finn Ross and Adam Young. Mr. Ward has absolutely hit a grand slam with this show. It and its difficult themes, characters, and situations, perfect casting, great choreography, and it moves right along. Everyone associated with this show should take a big bow. Bravo! Mean Girls, the high school version of the musical, continues at, on the campus of Seabury Hall in Makawal, November 17th and 18th at 7, and November 19th at 3 p.m. Go to seaburyhall.org slash arts for tickets. Last Friday and Saturday's performances were sold out. So hurry and get yours, or you might be disappointed. My review was one of the opening night cast. You may see different Janice, Gretchen, Karen, Kevin, Ms. Norbury, Mrs. George, and Mr. Duvall.
In contrast to Mean Girls less than three miles away, King Kekalike Drama Period 2 Intermediate and Advanced Acting Class is presenting a 413-year-old classic tale of revenge and love, William Shakespeare's The Tempest. Directed by Chris Kepler, the show comes in at two hours, including a 15-minute intermission. Mr. Kepler, like Julie Taymor's 2004 film, has chosen to have a female portray Miranda's Capua Villanueva's parent, Prospero, the remarkable Kea Moran. He also has given us a Queen Alonso, Arsene Sapanza Valoria, and her honest and trusted advisor, Gonzala, Cecilia Ashby, as well as a female monster, Caliban, Constance Pupar Vasquez. This gender bending and his judicious edits have done no harm to the greatness of the Bard's story. Prospera has been robbed of her dukedom by the queen and her brother, Antonio Devin Guzman, and exiled on an island where she has become a powerful sorcerer. She has a spirit, Ariel Sunny Baresi, who is indebted to her for a year for freeing her from a cloven pine tree. She has plotted to wreck the ship the usurpers are on and bring them to the island to get revenge. This was a particularly memorable staging. In the meantime, Miranda has come upon Ferdinand Pono Fortune, the only male she has ever seen, and she is overcome with unknown feelings. To Prospera's delight, they fall madly in love. Caliban, while hiding from a storm, convinces Stefano Naviathan Herpic, the queen's butler, with his friend Trinculo Diego Matthews, to murder Prospera, and Stefano will be the ruler of the island. The plots thicken, and you will have to go and see this outstanding production to find out whether love triumphs, evil is defeated, and revenge or forgiveness is the fate of the plotters. Ms. Moran gives us a Prospera who is a loving mother, a skillful plotter, a powerful sorcerer, and ruler. She hates the usurpers and enjoys using Ariel's powers to confound, confuse, and carry forth her plans for the plotters. I cannot say enough about the quality of the work Ms. Moran displayed in this most difficult and challenging role. She is like the sun in this universe. Everyone revolves around her, is dependent on her, and she shines as sublimely as the sunrise on Haleakala. It is one of the finest performances by a high school student I have seen. As Miranda, Ms. Villanueva, captures the innocence and youthful ex exuberance of the character perfectly. But her love at first sight moment and continued infatuation with Ferdinand was a thing of beauty. Mr. Fortune, with his matinee idol good looks, is a perfect choice for Ferdinand, and he acquits himself admirably, especially his love at first sight moment with Miranda. If Prospera is the sun, then Ariel is the light. Ms. Baresi is clearly having a marvelous time carrying out Prospera's directions and delighting in their results. Mr. Herpix Stefano and Mr. Matthews Trinculo are the fools in this show, and they play the part to perfection. The wrong Caliban is a character that is both sympathetic and threatening. Ms. Vasquez finds both of these seemingly conflicting elements and portrays them as the bard would have. The rest of the cast is uniformly excellent. The look of the show is stunning, and Mr. Kepler, Ms. Villanueva, and Mappa's Kathleen Schulz conspired to create the beautiful costumes that make this show first class. The show was all student-run, light, sound, everything. Special shout-out to Atlas Flynn for the projection designs. Mr. Kepler has much to take pride in. Taking on the Bard is no mean feat, and these students have done a terrific job. This show runs the 17th and 18th at 7 p.m. and the 19th at 3 p.m. Tickets are only available at the door via cash or check. Doors open half hour before curtain. This is outstanding student theater in one of our best performing arts spaces. Go and support the excellent work by these hardworking young people. Don't miss it. Well, that's Curtain Call for this week. Mahalo for joining in. I'm Paul Janes Brown, Maui Strong. Ahui ho.